And I understand Monday Night Raw aired last night. Oh, boy. And I understand I watched some of it, and I have no memory of any of it. I have no memory of any of it. And I la- explain it like you explained it to me. So, Jim, I watched Raw last night. I went to sleep about 1030. So I saw the first two and a half hours. But when I woke up, I can't remember anything that happened. That's the way you said it to me. But it will probably come back to me when you start talking about it as well. Yeah, what well, said. I ain't going to go into too much detail. Uh, again, boy, howdy. This is a three-hour program that could be, the meat of the matter could be condensed into 15 minutes, and you wouldn't miss anything. And a couple of things I watched under false pretenses. If you may recall, the first segment was Ms. TV. And normally I skip Ms. TV, but they opened up, there's Paul E., Paul Heyman already sitting in the ring for Ms. TV, so I said, I'm going to watch Ms. TV for Paul Heyman, right? Anything, any of this coming back to you? Do you remember Paul's jowls being out there? I do remember now this segment, and I can also see you saying, you know, oh, I want to watch Paul E. chew up the scenery, yes. Well, he didn't get a chance to take a bite because Paul E., he introduced himself, and they got with that. He, Paul's becoming a baby face because they just love to say his name and shit on the introduction. But then Miz did a long monologue about money in the bank and the cash-in process like he's done twice and put himself over endlessly. And I just jotted down, will Paulie ever get to speak? And that's when Miz pitches to him with, the winner of the money in the bank will cash in on Roman Reigns, and Paul says, and they will fail. And then Paulie took over, and he did, for him... This was nothing. For anybody else, it had been a great piece of business. But for him, is you lackluster because he didn't get very long. and he But he has the great facials and the reactions and the delivery. But as soon as he said a few things and talking about Roman Reigns, here comes riddle music. And I'm, oh, Christ. Here comes Goof comes out and does Goof shit and calls Paul a horse's ass. Um... Miz was pissed at the interruption of the 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 show there. I was pissed that we didn't get to hear more Paul. And instead, why couldn't Riddle have come out and interrupted Miz? Have you noticed? Heyman reminds me of John Taffer. What? Have you noticed that? Why? Because of the hair dye? Well, no. <laughs> actually, yeah. Paul's hair was not that fucking midnight black when he was 23 <laughs> years old. Our lightning bugs are following him around in the daytime with hair that dark. It's ins- I mean, you you could fall into his hair and disappear. It's got its own gravitational pull. It's so black. But <clears throat> he reminds me of John Taffer because he gets that that smile on his face when he's browbeating somebody and dressing them down. And you don't want to look bad in front of your whole family, do you now? <laughs> but anyway. So this Friday night, it's going to be Riddle against Roman Reigns on SmackDown. Either they're setting up for something good to happen with somebody else with Roman Reigns, or this is a a program we're going to have to watch between Riddle and Roman? I think so. I think Riddle's one of the guys that they seem to really like. A lot of guys are out. They don't have a lot of inventory right now. (laughs) So you kind of have to go with what you have and... He is over with the fans there. I mean, we don't really like his goofiness, but the fans like him. And out of all the people there, what are your other options? Do something with one of the New Day members again? Ooh, well, you may be right. <laughs> one of the guys that... If, there's a guy named Adam Revolver. Worked for OVW for a long time. When I went back briefly about 10 years ago, on Danny Davis asked me, please come and try to just help this show, right? He was in a bad spot at that particular point. And I came in and I watched the first show and Adam Revolver said to me, I was explaining that I was like, what the fuck can we do with this? And he said, well, you don't go to war with the army you want. You go to war with the army you have. I said, in that case, point me toward the white flag. (laughs) 
Anyway, Riddle fired up a little bit of what, what it wasn't that fun. Well, how did he react to that? I mean, just no one's no one gets that line thrown back in their face when they say that. He got kind of he got kind of used to me after a while. I you know, anyway. <laughs> Riddle fired up on the promo. If everything about him from his the way he speaks to the way he dresses to the the mannerisms that he has to the giraffes and unicorns flying out of his ass. Everything is so goofy. He's got some oomph. This is the first time I actually heard him speak like he was pissed off about something. He might be, and I know he was a shoot fighter, so he might be believable if he didn't have this persona. I assume that they didn't give him this persona on purpose because who would have ever thought of this and why would you do it on purpose if you did? So this must be him. But if he wasn't such a goddamn goof, I can see where you might have something. But basically, the stipulation is on Friday night on SmackDown, at least they're crossing over now. Can you imagine if they weren't putting some of these people on both shows, how much we would see of some of them? The stipulation is if he wins, he's the champion. But if he loses, he'll never get another title shot. So I'm hoping for a quick defeat of Riddle on Friday. And then Paul says, and let me introduce you to the Usos. And here come the Usos. But here come the Street Profits. What a shock. The only other team on the whole show that we see every week. But instead of interacting with Riddle, so out of this, Riddle didn't take advantage of being in the ring with the manager who was unprotected and do anything to Paul because Paul can't take a fucking bump anyway. My God, can you imagine if he if he busted open the the fucking saturated fat content right. alone would kill... All right. will you stop it? If he busted open, that's what's going to happen? If he takes a bump, if he's he gonna... took a bump and busted <laughs> open and all the fucking saturated fat and monosodium glutamate came out and sprayed all over everybody? I guess WWE's next step would be like a trauma films kind of run there. <laughs> and then the Usos can't beat up Riddle because the Street Profits come down and they got to, so they had a single match with one of the Usos against Montez Ford and just nothing happened with Riddle after the stipulation was announced. And, and we got to, after that match, that was the first 30 minutes of the show. So, and that's kind of where I started checking out. I hate to say it, but the Street Profits, as soon as they come out, I feel like I've seen whatever this is going to be. I've seen it yeah. every week. We've seen one versus the other and the other one versus the other one and both of them versus both of them and back and forth. Um, the One of the, be the best thing of the first hour of the show was probably the uh, Cody package of the gutsy performance, everybody putting him over, and then the recap of Seth Franklin Rollins jumping him and beating the piss out of him with sledgehammer last week. That was great. And again, they're, if they can keep doing this, they're going to keep Cody over and keep him in people's minds. But then Seth Franklin did a sit down backstage. Who is the stagey British announcer? That's uh, Nigel. That's not Nigel McGinnis. No, not Nigel McGinnis, but Nigel or Simon or Oliver. I forget what his name is. Or well, whatever it is, he has the 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 emotion of a fucking chair leg. I mean, it just he says these stilted. The accent sounds nice. You always sound like you're a little smarter if you got the British accent, but it's just without any emotion. So Seth has no remorse because Cody is a virus plaguing the WWE since WrestleMania. Boy, I wish every pandemic only lasted two months. You got to make unpopular decisions, Seth says. Take matters in your own hands. Some writer worked really hard on whatever it was that Seth was saying. Did you, do, do you remember when wrestling was fun to watch and you understood what people were saying and doing? It was straight. They weren't talking in circles. They weren't trying to be dramatic with flowery prose. And it, and you, you mean actually, before scripts? Yes, I remember. Yes, and you actually understood what the fuck that they was talking about, what they were bumping their gums about. Did you understand what? Well, no, you were asleep by this point. 
Well, no, I was I was still watching by this point, but you got to remember, my attitude is Seth Rollins is on PCP. That's the gimmick. He could say anything. He could do anything. It, it all fits in with the gimmick. Well, it's Seth versus AJ Styles tonight, and the winner goes into the Money in the Bank match. It's a qualifier, but at that point, Seth looked at his sledgehammer and laughed uproariously, and AJ Styles came in and just kicked him over backwards in his chair and knocked him on his ass. So that passes for an angle these days.